So you've done it. You've scrimped and you've saved. Maybe you've moved back in with your parents. Maybe you cut down on the avocados. Maybe you're paying less for expensive teas and coffees, but it was worth it. You finally got your house. But now you've realized that mortgages actually cost a lot more than what you originally thought. And now you're wondering, well, you've got some extra cash. Is it worth maybe overpaying that mortgage a little bit? Well, come with me and we'll go through the pros and cons of paying extra on the mortgage versus some other things you can do with the money, like investing. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the channel. So the first thing we'll do is we will go over the pros of overpaying the mortgage. Now, the most obvious thing that overpaying the mortgage does is it cuts down on the timeline. If you've got a mortgage that is 25 years based on a certain amount that you're paying each month, let's say £500, and every month you're paying extra, well, of course, that's going to cut down on how long you have the mortgage for. It also reduces your interest payments and how much the total is that you have to pay back over the lifetime of the mortgage. And this is just because as you reduce that mortgage amount quicker, those monthly interest payments that, that tend to stack up over time, they're just, they're just a little bit less each time, and that change over 25 years can make a big difference. So you can see here, this is a mortgage calculator. I just put in £200,000 worth of debt over 25 years, and we put an interest rate of 2%. That's about where things are at the moment. And we've done a recurring overpayment of £100 extra each month. And you can see here that this actually saves you £7,648 in interest alone. And you actually pay the debt off in full three years and three months earlier. So while well, you may think my mortgage is going to be with me for the rest of my life, it doesn't matter if I pay it off a few years early. Well, actually, you can see here that not only do you pay it off a few years early, but in the long run, you're saving yourself quite a lot of money and interest by making those O payments with the extra cash. And bear in mind that this is just at a 2% interest rate. Where we are in the UK at the moment, interest rates are rising. They're rising quite a lot. So who knows, maybe in a few years time, that interest rate might change. So instead of 2%, maybe it's something like 5%. So if we enter 5% here instead, now that actually, it only changes the time difference by a little bit. You, you're now at three years and six months earlier. But if you look at how much you save in interest alone, that has jumped up to a massive £24,531. Just changing that interest rate because the interest that you'll be paying is much higher. By paying it off earlier, you're saving so much more money. And this is something to keep in mind because interest rates have historically been low, but they are rising at the moment. This could mean that now is a better time to pay off more on your mortgage because who knows, in a few years time, you might have to remortgage at a higher rate. And so having less of a loan value ready for when you remortgage is a good thing because that's going to save you money on those repayments that you have to make if you do remortgage onto a higher interest rate. Now, it's not a perfect idea. There are a few cons of overpaying your mortgage. The first one is that inflation and salary increases tend to diminish the effect of debt over a long term anyway. House prices tend to rise as well, so your debt to equity ratio will be getting better and better over time. You know, if you've got that £200,000 mortgage, if you've got that, say, on a £250,000 house, you know, that's quite scary. But for example, if uh, you know, if five or ten years later you've paid off some of that, so maybe you've got 175000 left, and your house price has gone up and now it's 300,000, you know, that equity ratio, debt to equity ratio does seem a bit better. The other possible downside of overpaying your mortgage is that that extra money you're paying is gone. There's not usually a way to get it back. Some mortgages will let you, if you have been overpaying, they might let you take a month off here or there from your payments if you've overpaid, but that really depends on your mortgage and your mortgage provider. It's not a guarantee. So yeah, typically, if you do spend your extra cash each month overpaying the mortgage, that's gone. So if you don't want to overpay your mortgage, what are the things that you can do with your extra cash each month? So I'm going to talk about a couple of other things you can do, and then we're going to move on to investing, which is sort of the big, you know, should I pay off the mortgage or should I invest? In between there, you have a few other stages that I think are worth thinking about first. The first thing is you should make sure you've covered any high interest debt that you have. This includes things like credit cards, payday loans, car finances. And the reason for this is that these have a much higher interest rate than your mortgage ever will. You know, these are, you know, credit cards, 20 to 30 percent. Car finance is usually much higher. Payday loans, honestly, those percentages are through the roof. You know, these things are going to rack up debt for you much, much faster than your mortgage would. And so the inverse of that is that paying off those faster will save you more money than overpaying your mortgage will. Basically, any interest saved by making these overpayments faster is money back. It's a return on investment, if you will. And so I would recommend any high interest debt you have, that should be the first thing you're doing. Secondly, after that, I think you should be thinking about setting up an emergency fund. Now, this is just, you know, put some money, put aside in a savings account, and you want it to cover 
a good amount of monthly expenses. Typically three to six months is kind of the recommended amount of money that you want to have set aside. And you may think that this is a lot, but really it's to cover those emergencies, things like times when you've lost your job and you may need a few months of mortgage coverage or rent coverage in order to you know make sure you don't lose your house. Things like you know your boiler packs in, that's gonna cost a lot of money up front to get replaced or repaired. Uh, you know, things like your car breaks down and you need to do big repairs, or maybe even you need to just completely get a new car. Those kind of things are not cheap. And if you don't have any kind of emergency fund set up, then, you know, they can land you in real trouble. After you've paid off your high interest debt, I would say go straight for the emergency fund. And after you've done that, we can look at the other option, which is investing. Right, so let's say you followed my advice, you've paid off your high interest debt, you've built up a solid emergency fund, now you've got a little bit of extra cash each month, a couple hundred pounds, something like that, and you're wondering, do I overpay the mortgage or do I invest? So the first thing to remember is that while with your mortgage, returns are guaranteed, you know you know exactly what interest rate you're gonna be getting on your mortgage, so you know what interest rate you're gonna save by overpaying, with investing, that is not a guarantee. Now sure, the average over a long period of time is that stocks will return around 10%. If you look at the S&P 500, which is a sort of like a general measure of the biggest companies in America, you can see that this has happened over a long period of time, you're likely to make your money. But what you can see is that within each year, the returns are not guaranteed at all. And in fact, if you were unlucky enough to start investing at the beginning of this year, 2022, you're actually down by quite a bit this year, over 15% year to date so far. So, you know, as you can see, while long term, sure, you're, you're very likely to be making some returns. Short term, it's a bit riskier. You know, you can invest and not make money for a while. So there's that option to weigh up. If you get it right, then obviously the returns could be much better. You could be laughing all the way to the bank if you make some incredible bets. But really, it depends what you invest in. So. The best things to invest in are index funds, but they're slow, steady growth versus say individual stocks, which are you know high risk, but can be high reward. And really these two offer different amounts of returns at different time frames and with different likelihoods of it happening. Uh, if you wanna learn more about that guys, uh, just let me know in the comments and I can make a video on that to go through different things that you can invest in. But as you can see, it's not a guaranteed return. Now, the other side of this is that while you, while it's possible that, you know, in a year's time or something like that, you might be down on your investments. You do technically still have that money. You can pretty much withdraw at any time. Sure, there might be, you know, depending on which broker you use, there might be a delay of a couple of days, but you tend to still have that money accessible. Whereas, as I said before, if you're overpaying the mortgage, well, that can mean that, you know, you don't have access to that money at all anymore. So really, I think, the, the big thing to weigh up is your interest rate on your mortgage. If you've got a low interest rate on your mortgage, then really you're much more likely to see a net gain by investing. Whereas if you've got kind of like a higher interest rate on your mortgage, as mortgage rates start going up towards, you know, you know, I, I mean, I hope this doesn't happen, but if they start going up to like four or 5%, you know, then you're kind of entering territory where you're thinking, well, it just purely in terms of numbers, it's probably better to be paying off the mortgage. As things are, if we sort of get back down towards that 1.5% interest rates on your on mortgages, then you know that purely financially, there's a good argument to be made that investing is better because over the long term, you'll make a better amount of money off that. Currently, though, interest rates are rising and investments are looking, you know, quite shaky. Sure, you could you could load up right now, banking on a big turnaround over the next couple of years, but really, honestly, who knows how long that will take for the current situation to turn around. Now, the final factor to think about is one that's not really financial and it's purely psychological. If you have a mortgage payment every single month, it's 500, 600, 700 pounds, maybe more, and you're in a position where you're able to overpay, you're able to get that mortgage down and you are able to not pay that a few years earlier, then imagine the psychological relief, the weight off your mind, when you come to the end of that and you realize, one, you own the house, that nothing's ever gonna change that, and two, you suddenly have this extra money each month that you don't have to pay towards the mortgage. You know, that, that 700 pounds that, that every month for the last 25 years went towards the mortgage. Suddenly that's yours, it's back again. You can do whatever you want with it. You know, that's a big thing. That's a big weight off people's minds and it's, it's a very compelling reason to overpay the mortgage so that you can get that money back earlier. And sure, maybe you could have paid a little bit into investments earlier, but now you've not got a mortgage to pay and all that extra money could go towards investments, for example. Well, that can build up a good investing sum 
much quicker. Well, what do you guys think? Would you rather overpay on the mortgage or would you rather invest? Let me know down in the comments what you think and what your reasons are for going with one over the other. I hope you found this useful, just weighing up the options either way. And if you did, then please subscribe to see some future videos. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.